Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials, I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is basically how to create an object from its own class. I'm going to open up my website here to javacjava.com and click on the begin button. I'm going to scroll down to the tutorial for create object slash own class. In Java, it is quite common to create an object out of its own class. As you know by now, the main method is the entry point for the class being invoked by the Java command line tool. Future programs that you write will grow quite large over time, and in the growth process, your main method will become spaghetti. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to create an object from its own class and also how to keep your main method clean and tidy. First thing we're going to do is come down here and we'll highlight the code for our box class. Select Control C or right click and select copy, right? We'll move our browser off window here. We'll go down to start, um, then search, type in CMD. Open up our command prompt there. First thing you're going to do is type in Java C and you should see a bunch of stuff scroll by. If you see an error message, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing on. Uh, let's see, I'm going to type in CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash CD is short for change directory backslash tells it to go to the root. And we're going to make a directory called Java. MD is make directory. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. And then we're going to make a directory called own class underneath there after we change to that folder. And let's go ahead and change directories to the own class folder. I'm going to notepad box.java first. Box.java just contains one method, and that's calculate volume. It uh, receives three parameters, box length, box height, box width, all integer types, and it returns an integer type. We've got a temporary variable return value here, local variable, and we're going to assign it the value of box length times box height times box width, and we are going to return that volume calculation and return value from the calculate volume method. Okay, we'll save this, type in java c box.java. If we type in dir for directory, we can see we have our source code file and then the box.class. The box.class contains the Java bytecode. Let's clear our screen there. Um, let's go ahead and close out of that. We aren't really going to need that anymore. It's fairly simple. And we'll call this ownclass.java. Okay. The ownclass.java will contain the main method entry point there, along with several other things there. Back to the website, we'll scroll down here, highlight all this. And basically I right click, how I do that controlled there is I right click on my right mouse and I drag a little bit and then I use the down arrow on my keyboard to kind of control that there. Sometimes it'll get away from you and highlight everything if you're using the scroll wheel or something. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. Then we'll go ahead and move that off screen and control V to paste or you can right click and select paste. Okay, let's go ahead and save this. Now, in this particular class, we've got our class declaration, own class, and then we've got our starting uh, curly brace, closing brace here, our code block inside of there, and then our public static void main method entry point. And here is the main method code block there, the method body per se. And this, of course, is the method signature. So, uh, what I'm going to do is highlight this, and I'm just going to... Uh, Hit shift delete just to delete this out, right? Now, own class is no different from any other class that we'd create an object out of. It, it has um, some methods in here, right? Four methods, as a matter of fact, there. So, uh, display greeting is a void type, simply displays to the console. Welcome, this program will calculate the volume of three boxes, right? Then we've got another method here, get box volumes, that returns an integer, single dimensional integer array, right? And here is the code block for that, the method body per se. We're going to create three reference variables to new box objects, right? So box one here creates a, a new box, new 
box object, right? And box two and box three. So all box one, two, and three have their own separate box objects that they refer to. So then we're going to initialize a single dimensional integer type array, return array, uh, with three elements. Element number one will contain um, the object or the reference variable box one of that box object. We'll invoke its calculate volume method with and we'll pass it uh, 5, 7, and 3 for the dimensions. Uh, box 2, 10, 5, 4, box 3, 15, 4, and 10, right? And we'll store all of those, those values into this array in uh, index number 1 element, index 0, in, which is element the first element, right? And then the second element and the third element, right? So the indexes start off on 0, even though that's the first element of the array. And then we'll return that array right? Um, the main, this get box volumes will return that array. The next function or next method I've got going on here function, you can tell I actually know about a dozen languages. Sometimes I get the terminologies mixed up even though I try to try to use the Java terminologies as much as possible. So this method here is a void return type and we're passing it a <coughs> parameter here which is um, going to be um, a single dimensional integer array. So I've got, I'm initializing a variable counter equal to one, and that's just purely for display purposes. And then I'm printing off a blank line, and then I'm using the enhanced for um, loop here, also called the for each loop. And then inside of the code block is where it'll keep iterating through the array of volumes as as long as there's more elements, all three of the elements up here from this specifically in this case. So we've got our temporary integer data type of temp variable and the enhanced loop temp var and it'll basically go through and say okay what's the first element in array of volumes? I'll go ahead and assign that element to this int type temp var, right? And then we'll display the volume of box number plus the counter, right? In this place, we, in this case, it'll be number one is, and then it'll display the first element of, of array volumes, which now is contained in temp var. Then it'll add one to the counter, and then it'll go to the second element of array volumes stored into temp var, and then we'll display that. And then the third element of array volumes, it'll store it into temp var, and then we'll display that. So. Uh, you might want to review my tutorial on the enhanced for loop if the if this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, and then the last method that we have is a void return type, and I'll display goodbye as the method name. It'll simply do a, a call the print line method and display this to the console. Thank you for using the Acme volume calculation program. Okay, let's come back up here and I'll do a control Z to undo that and put back in our main method. So here's our, our method. So here's our main method entry point here. The first thing we're gonna do is declare a reference variable and allocate a new own class object. So own class is the type that we're doing, which happens to be the same name as the class. And then our reference variable name, own class reference, I just decided to call it that because it's exactly what it is, equals new own class object, right? Now that we have a new own class object, we can actually use the dot operator to um, invoke these methods for, from the own class object, right? Hopefully that makes sense. It should after we go through this a few, few times here. So now the first thing we're gonna do is take this own class reference variable, use the dot operator to invoke the display greeting, right? Which will come down here and I'll say, okay, we're gonna go ahead and say, welcome, this program will calculate the volume of three boxes. Next thing we're gonna do is just um, go ahead and create a volume array, single, um, single dimensional volume array with integer types and there'll be three elements there, okay? And then we're going to assign that um, uh, variable, that single dimensional integer array variable, the result of the get box volumes method down here, right? <clears throat> you can see all of our data types are matching up. We got a single dimensional integer array. As you know, volume array now is a single dimensional volume array, and we'll get the return back values there. 
Now display volumes, this particular method that we're going to invoke, we have, we'll pass it volume array. Display volumes will then receive this integer array here, and it will go ahead and iterate through them using the enhanced for loop and display the volumes. And then the last thing we're going to do is, is use our reference own class reference variable and the, then the dot operator to invoke the display goodbye method, which will display this. Okay, let's, so let's go ahead and save this here. Let's come back up here and we'll do Java C own class dot Java to compile that. And then we'll go ahead and uh, invoke the own class here using the Java runtime, the JVM. And we get exactly what we expected there. First thing it does, move this off back down here, right? We're displaying the greeting, right? And then we're getting the box volumes, storing them in this array, and then we're displaying the volumes right here, right? And then we're calling the display goodbye right there. Okay, so. We've got three kind of three little sections as far as what goes on here for the, the screen there. We display our, our greeting and then we actually display the volumes and then we display our goodbye. So I'm gonna pop back here to this. And as you probably noticed, I got the this will go away. All three of these lines are just gonna go away because we can do in one line, this single line right here with these three lines do up here. We don't have to declare this. I did just so you could see um, more of a kind of a breakdown, a detailed breakdown on how all this works. But as you know, this, um, the get box volume will return back an array, right? A single dimensional integer array. So we don't have to declare that. We can just pass it. We'll pass it as an argument and the display volume receives it as a parameter, right? So this can go away now too. And I'm just gonna do da 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 da, right? And we can even get rid of this, this little comment up here. And now we'll go ahead and save this, right? Now we've got a very clean main method. We're just creating an object of our own class and then we're calling the display greeting, the display volumes, passing in the get box volumes result, and then we're displaying goodbye. So now we've got a really clean main method. Now, if we could have just, you know, typed in this, typed in all this, and um, all this, and everything like that, right? But what'll happen over time is, is your program will grow over time. This is a really, really simple program, right? But imagine, like let's say for example box volumes, let's see more added time. Come in here and you add some more functionality to that. And then you know a couple months later you're like, oh yeah, you know I want to do this and then bada boom bada bing. And the next thing you know, you've got this method that's just huge, right? And but if this was all up in the main method um, body up here. Man, all this stuff would just get huge and your main method will turn into total spaghetti. Anyway, so let's go ahead and take this out here. Save this. We'll go ahead and come back here, clear our screen. We'll recompile the, <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and run it. Okay, so we get the exact same result here. Everything is beautiful here. We've created a object out of our own, out of its own class. Right? And that's the reason why I named it own class there. So we got a reference variable referring to an object of its own class. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close out of that. I'm going to bring back over the website here for the final thoughts. So it is very common to create an object from its own class. It is really no different than creating an object of any other class. Once you create the object, you can access that class's members, which in the case of this tutorial are the other methods. I kept the main method clean by calling methods instead of executing a bunch of statements. This tutorial utilized several concepts from the prior tutorials. Um, the following prior tutorials. Enhanced for statement, introduction to methods tutorial, single dimensional array tutorial, class introduction tutorial. So if this tutorial didn't quite exactly click or anything like that, review some of these tutorials, then come back to this tutorial and then everything should make, uh, make complete sense. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and out of that and that concludes this tutorial.
Thanks for watching.